Psalms chapter 130, a song of degree. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. He doesn't say what the depths are. And to what we can acknowledge, he cried unto the Lord, death with some kind of trouble. In over my head would be the expression. Lord, hear my voice. Let thy ears be attentive unto the voice of my supplication. Again, I felt like this. You're praying to God and you don't think God's listening. Or you are in this, I mean, the depths. I'm assuming the psalm is, is in over his head. You know, like he's out in the middle of the ocean, like a shipwreck, like Paul, out in the deep, and you're just bobbing in the water, looking for, well, today, you didn't want to be psalmist, but, you know, looking for an airplane, another ship or something. And in that kind of distress, like, God, stop everything you're doing. Don't feed the fish. I don't care about that man getting saved over there. Right now, I need you to hear me. And we have such a mighty God that a man in Bangkok trusting on Jesus Christ, a woman in Singapore whose baby's about to die, uh, in Chicago, a family has been involved in a motor vehicle accident. In South Africa, a missionary is just weeping out for the people he's trying to witness and in Germany, this, and France, that, and Florida, and Mexico, and Chile, and Canada, and Alaska, and Russia. And I could just name every place in the world, and that doesn't stop God from hearing. We don't have a God that has a, a, a multiple line prayer life. Wait a minute, hold on, you know, all my lines... Lord God, I need a prayer. Sorry, Lord God's number is busy right now. At the feet, will you please leave your prayer request, your name, and God will get back. God doesn't do that. God is able to hear all our prayers. The Holy Spirit is able to pray for us and acknowledge and answer and wait or know all at once. And I don't know how God can do it. Because you think about it. Every saved person hopefully prays to God. And many of us, we pray for ourselves, for our family, for our church, for our loved ones, for our co-workers, for our name. We just pray. And God hears us all. Take Sunday morning. Now the Eastern time zone is the East is Eastern United States. And I think it's to Mississippi. I think after the Mississippi River is another time. So you take the eastern uh, seaboard. That's Maine, New England, Washington, D.C., the Carolinas, Virginia, Delaware, Georgia, Florida, maybe Mississippi, maybe Arkansas. I don't know. I don't have a map. All right. Sunday morning, let's say... Uh, our church starts at 10.30. How many churches at 10.30 and about that time are now reaching up to God to bless their service? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. You, you, your church, you know, you guys are going to have to start at 11 o'clock. I've got too many people at 10.30. You guys are going to have to go at 11.30 because, you know, i got 10.30. 10.30 is book. 11 o'clock is a book. No. We have a God that's capable of answering all prayers and hearing all prayers. And yet what the psalmist is saying, Lord, is not he's not saying, God, you're deaf. He's in over his head with the deaf. And he's like, Lord, God, attend to my ear. Because later on, the psalmist, whoever he is, is going to, Lord, thank you for my prayers. Thank you, Lord, for the supplication. But right now, God, I need you to hear. I've been there. 
I've been there several times. Let thy ears be attended to the voice of my supplication. I'm really praying, Lord. This is not, you know, one of them, you know, those, you know, pray for Sally. Yeah, pray, you know, the dog, Lord God, uh, you know. This is a serious prayer. If thou, now we're done with the prayer. If thou, Lord, should mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? We've come to a different. I don't know at what point that period supplicate. Lord God, I need your prayer, but Lord, if you mark iniquities, who will stand? Who will stand sinless? At the point of Psalms 130, no one would be standing. Now, approximately, somewhere around 0 AD, to about 33 and a half AD, 33 and a half years in, in the moment of time of our calendar, though been executed and changed by the Roman Catholic Church, so you can't go by our calendar, but there were 33 and a half years of the calendar that a man named the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God and is of God, was completely sinless, sinless and God would not mark his iniquity. Yet upon the cross of Jesus, God turned his head as he marked upon Jesus every single sin that man has done. No one can stand before God sinless. People come up to us all the time, well, I'm good. You're not good enough. I've had, right now I've got one man and maybe others, I, I forget, my memory goes. I've got one man I know for sure who's told, I've never sinned. I think there's been a couple others. And I've talked to, and we got in a shouting match. You know, and I got a shouting match, but it did. I said, you're sinning by now by saying you haven't sinned. And I quoted over there, uh, First John, he said, if we say we have no sin, we make it, oh, I don't ever. I said, well, the Bible says all have sinned. I don't sin. I don't know what his problem was. But, but there is forgiveness. That's the first time that word shows up. The first time forgiveness shows up is the Lord marking our sins. There is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. When God forgives us, we ought to fear. What do we ought to fear? Sinning again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of, of knowledge. The knowledge, I ought not be doing that. I may know about the sin, but I, I may not do it. Because God may not take it so lightly next time. I wait for the Lord. How the deaths have I cried in thee, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice, let thy ears be attended, the voice of my supplication. What happened to waiting? I don't know. Because my sin, one of my faults is I'm impatient. I'm going to assume, and you can make the comments and tell me, I, I don't know. But I would think that every Christian, everyone has a has a teeny little bit of impatience. Somewhere in your life, the year you went, come on, let's hurry up. I know people that are late. All of that, their main goal in life is, is they're late. There's got to be something that rouses. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. That eternal being. How are you going to further your soul? To, I'm going to commit suicide. I've heard of a man who was saved in a wheelchair, took a shotgun, put it in his mouth, pulled the trigger, and God says, that ain't done yet. And the guy survived. 
I don't know the guy. I, I've heard from another preacher. But I want to end it off. I was like, hey, you and your soul, you got to wait. Bang! You got to wait. Life and death is in, in the power of God. In his word, do I hope. I hope my sports team wins. I hope to get married. I hope to graduate. I hope to get to be in this business. I hope to get this card. I hope to get this coin. I hope to get. How about in the word? I hope tomorrow morning the Lord wake my soul up. And the Lord is, is, is the Lord tarries. I hope to I open up his word. And Lord, give me time to read his word. I have days where I couldn't read his word. Last, I think it was last year or a couple years ago, I had a time I woke up for about a week and I could not see when I looked at the page of my Bible, it was white. Something had happened to my eyes. There was, there was nothing on the page of my Bible and I wept. And there are times you get up in the morning, something happens. Your computer messes up, or you got to go run somewhere, or you got doctor's point, you got this, and you just can't read. You get a phone call, and you got to do this, and you got to do that, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. Or you remember something. I hope in the word. When hope, What's hope in the word? The Bible says, never leave thee or forsake thee. I hope that the word is true to God, faithful to God is, he'll never leave thee or forsake thee. The Bible says one day that I'm either going to die or I'm going to be raptured. I hope either or. I'd like to be raptured, but if the Lord tarries, okay, to be absent from the body and presence with the Lord. I hope one day to be absent from this body and presence with the Lord. I hope one day that the Bible says that uh, uh, the trump shall sound and, angel shall, and the archangel shall shout. I wait for that day. The Bible says the dead who are in Christ have rise up first. I'm waiting for that. Bible says Jesus come and wait for that. The Bible says ask and, and thou shalt be, I'm waiting for that. I got, that's my hope. The Bible says Jesus Christ, God is the blessed hope. Too many Christians, oh, I hope Donald Trump gets in there. I hope the Democrats get wiped out. I hope to, you know, we keep our rights. I hope to keep my gun. That's not hoping. That's not a Bible hope. You know, when elections are coming, you know what I hope? I hope whatever God does, he does it to further bring the Antichrist to power. You do what? Hey, God brings the Antichrist into power. That means we're going home pretty soon. Because I ain't going to be here when the Antichrist is in power. And you're voting for your Republican or you voting for your Democrat may hinder the, the Antichrist further from coming. I would be, I would hate to get the glory and find out what God, well, you know, guys, I was, I was going to have the rapture happen. Oh, yeah, Lord, you know, Peter Speaker, what happened? Okay, all the Republicans on the left side, you're what happened. You wanted your candidate to win, your candidate won, had he lost, and the rapture would have happened four years early. I mean, there are Christians that want Donald Trump more than they want Jesus. I read mean, you post more about Donald Trump than Jesus Christ. You know, I put on my Facebook, there's a way, anything to do with politics. I don't see it no more. You know, since I've done that, there's a lot of my Christian friends, I don't see their posts anymore. Quite interesting. Now, let me get off that. The hope of the word. There's so much in the Bible with that hope. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish. I've got family members I'm hoping and praying that God will save their soul before he comes. Before they die. I'm hoping to learn more in the Bible. Today, I, I, I'm reading my Bible. I'm looking like, wow, that's good. Didn't see that before. I'm hoping... I, I, I'm doing Sunday school Sunday morning. I'm hoping God will allow me the time to get the whole chapter done. I really love the chapter I'm doing. There's so much in it. I'm hoping. And I was just going to read it. I was going to read 
Psalms 132. All right, Psalms 130. The people are like, what? I don't know. <laughs> My soul waited. Oh, shut up. Now, somebody who's impatient like me, shut up. And it's a sin, and I do well a while, and I do bad a while. My soul waited. Out of death have I cried to the Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Thine ears be attentive to the voice of my... All right, hear me now. Why, whoa, you're not waiting. I'll tell you one thing. I, 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 said, to, I said to Mark, everybody has that one point of impatience. And I'll tell you, a point, and this has happened to me three times, I think, in my life. I'll tell you the point where you're going to, if this hasn't happened to you, Lord, I hope it don't. I'll have that moment when impatience comes, when you call 911. And that, that, that operator is asking you 46,000 questions. And now they, now when you call 911, they're going to ask you questions about coronavirus. Have you been out of town? Have you had anybody with coronavirus? As they have seen, have they? Oh, well. Calling 911 and waiting for that ambulance for the police to come. That takes eternity. And there's nothing you can do to push it. When you got a loved one sick or something violently has happened to your house. And you're waiting for to hear the sirens. And you're off 911. You're out in the driveway and you still don't hear sirens. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this has actually happened to me. And I get there, I hear the sirens. Like, well, oh, I heard this way over on the other side of Daytona Beach. I live right behind the hospital. I got, I live right behind the hospital. And the ambulances are there. Why is it one well? My soul waited for the Lord. And you ain't going to push God. If there's anybody who's patient, absolutely, completely patient, it is God that he is in no hurry. And for people like me who are impatient, that aggravates them. The sin. Maybe I'm confessing my faults. Pray for me. My soul waited for the Lord more than than they that watch for the morning. What's that? Can't wait to get up in the morning. Going to go on a fishing trip. Can't get up in the morning. Got, got this appointment. Can't wait to get up in the morning. Going this. Can't wait to get up in the morning. We're going to Bratland. We're going. Can't wait to get up in the morning. We're going to go ride a roller coaster. Can't wait to get up in the morning. We're going to go on our trip. Can't wait to go in the morning. We're going to... And the psalmist says, "I wait for the Lord more than they for the morning." I say, in case you didn't hear me, more than they that watching them. Look at that. You ought not repeat yourself. I had a guy yell last week. Every single week. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey, it's in the Bible. Repeat. Repetitive. Jesus said, verily, verily. He wanted to get his point. More than they that watch in the morning. Yeah, they have a great desire for what's going to happen tomorrow. And James said, we don't know what our life is. It may be a vapor. Imagine if the Lord came in the middle of the night and you're waiting for your whatever it is tomorrow. And those are waiting for the rapture. Those are waiting for the rapture. Yay! And those who weren't waiting for the rapture. But Lord, it didn't happen. I think there are going to be Christians at the rapture. When it happens, they're going to be angry. I guarantee it. Let Israel. Uh-oh. We're in Israel. Verse 8, Israel. Doctrine applies, Psalm 130, Old Testament, Israel. Now, you can spiritualize it and, and apply it to the church, the Christians. Spiritual application is not always doctrinal application. 
and doctrinal application is not always spiritual application. I can, Psalm 130, I can take that and apply that to a Christian. Until I get to verse 7, it says, let Israel. Then I'm in trouble. I can say the Christian calls on the Lord out of his troubles. I can say the Christian plies his voice, Lord, hear me. I can say the Christian, the Lord marks our sins. I can call upon the Christian to fear the Lord. The Lord forgives us. I can call upon the Christian, wait for the Lord. Call upon the Christian, wait for the Lord. Let Israel. But even ply, spiritually applying Psalm 130, all right, in the church age, all right, let's, let's put the application to church age. Let Israel hope in the Lord. There's a period of time after the church age, there's a period of time, seven years of Jacob's trouble. Three and a half years of tribulation, three and a half, great, three and a half years of great tribulation. And then their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior, is coming to get them. And the blessed hope. Titus 2.13. So see, there is application to the church age for Psalm 130. For with the Lord there is mercy. And yes, there is. And with him is plenteous redemption. That's repurchase. When you, back in Connecticut where I lived, when you bought soda in a bottle or a can, and you finish that can or that bottle, you were, you could bring it back to the grocery store. You can put it in the machine. And when I was living in, in Connecticut, for every bottle and can, you get a nickel. That's called rede redemption. Redeem your nickel. You pay for that nickel, you get that nickel back. You're giving that can back to the soda company. I was born to God, Genesis chapter 1 and 2. I became a child of the devil, Genesis 3, John 8. I came to Calvary and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I've been adopted through the Holy Spirit. I've been bought back by the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't belong to the devil no more. The day I received Jesus Christ as my Savior, God turned to the devil to Satan and said, All right, give me that soul. It's mine. Well, yeah? Okay, God, what are you going to give me for that soul? The blood of Jesus. All right, you win. At the blood of Jesus, repenting of your sins and calling upon Jesus Christ to say, the devil has to turn your soul back to God. That's called redemption. The devil cannot turn your soul over by religion, by baptism, or by any works that you do. I gotta, I'm not even gonna, no, I'm not even going to get it because it can't even happen. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquity. What do you do with those that say God's all finished with Israel? What do you do with that verse? You hear all these verses I say against the Jehovah Witnesses. And true. All right. What about the churches or religions that say God's all finished with the Jew? What do you do with verse 8? When Jesus Christ comes, He's going to redeem the remnant of Israel forever. He's going to remove their iniquity. He's going to give them a brand new heart and a brand new spirit. And he's going to revive the nation of Israel again. What are you going to do? God's all finished with Israel. Somebody hasn't studied to show themselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. 